Hi, welcome to Art with Miss Linda. For those of you who have taken my foundation class, this will seem familiar because we're going to revisit texture. We've learned lines, shapes, forms, texture brings all of those together. The project is going to be extremely fun, but I want to revisit what types of textures there are in our world. They're simulated texture. All right, I'm going to let you shout out the answer to me. What does that mean? Right, things that you see that your mind tells you it feels like something. When you look at a picture in a magazine or a painting or even when you're looking at the computer and researching things for your classwork, you see these pictures and your mind tells you that that's soft or that's slimy or that's prickly and, and you don't have to touch it. But the actual texture that you can touch is what we're going to concentrate on a little later on. It's, it, it communicates vi visually and with your fingers. So you're using more than one of your senses to, to get the concept of what the artist or even what an object feels like or is. Remember, we touch things when we did our forms so that you're, you could feel what it felt like because it, that's as important as what you see visually. Sculptures you can touch, that's not a problem. Sometimes painters use heavy paint, that's something. Collages, when you glue things down. I know um, many artists did collages. There's, there's a famous artist, Cornell, who does primarily these boxes that are full of beautiful things. So we're gonna do this complex project together. You need to cover your space because we're using a lot of glue today. I use newspaper, I repurpose it. A lot of people don't get newspapers nowadays. So if you have an old sheet, a pillowcase, um, an empty pizza box that's not filthy that you can use, Cover your space because we're going to be using quite a bit of glue and it makes cleanup easier because remember, we're responsible for putting all of our materials out prior to our classes or before our classes. And then when we're finished, we're responsible for cleaning up our area. If someone wants to help us and make sure things go where they need to go. And then this project also will take some time to dry. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's learn about texture in a really fun way. All right, I promised you a super fun, super unusual. Like I said, you know, these days we gotta think inside the box a little bit. So I tried to find things that most people would most likely have in their home to do this really fun textural project. Let's call it a project. Texture is definitely an important part of artwork. This right here was gift wrap that someone had given me on a gift probably 30 years ago. And I could not get rid of it because it's so beautiful. And then I noticed that it actually had cheesecloth, like, you know, like gauze, like when you hurt your finger and you put gauze around it. Cheese Cheesecloth is used in cooking and to drain liquids out of things. It's actually a strainer. It strains particles from going through. So after looking at it for a long time, um, I just got my stuff out and figured I was going to make something amazing with it. Now, these are two types of bases that you can use. Obviously, corrugated cardboard, my favorite. This is a heavier um, piece of paper. You can also use cut an empty cereal box and cut it into a rectangle. I've shown you how to do that in other times, but you know, use anything around the house, repurpose it, reuse it. I actually had pizza last night and cut the top box off, top of the box off because it was clean and I was going to use it for something. And you'll also need string or yarn. The string is made of cotton, so it glues easier. The yarn is a little bit thicker and will give you more of a texture. So I'm not gonna just start doing it. I wanna show you mine. This is what I came up with after seeing this. 
Now, it's definitely not something you want to wrap a present in, but it's definitely this beautiful textural piece of art. And it's a little nautical, which means it has something to do with the sea or if you lived, you know, if you had a lake house or if you went to the beach, you would see things that would have similar, similar textures to them. So to begin our texture journey, I will show you two that I've done because white glue takes a while to dry. Your white glue will take a while to dry. And if you look, if you can see the shine, I used quite a bit of glue. You won't see it with the finished product, our finished piece of artwork. So don't be afraid. Generally, Miss Linda says a little glue goes a long way. Well, in this case, you need a lot of glue to hold this down. And especially with this. So we've got our organic shapes and our geometric shapes here. To be quite honest, doing these geometric shapes were much harder than the organic because you have to like hold it while it's drying a little bit for it to create a straight line. And also notice the negative and positive space. There's enough of the brown, the negative space showing so that when the design comes through, it won't look like there's a big empty space. And I tried to do the same with my geometric shapes. So I'm going to put these over here off to the side and let's get to work. You need your white glue. You need your scissors. Definitely need one of my favorite tools besides my fingers, the toothpicks. The lowly toothpicks are one of the best tools you'll find. And you're going to need a little cup. Um, a throwaway cup is easier. When glue is in something, it's a little difficult to wash out. So if you see how much glue I have in there, we're going to be using this at the very end. I'm going to leave it set off to the side and then put some water in it. Now make sure you can hear it. I put it by my microphone so you could hear it. You can feel it too. Make sure that your glue is open. If it's fully open, it's going to come out in a thick stream. If you twist it closed, it's going to be a little thinner. So first thing I'm going to do is let's take and cut a piece of string. I found that if you use too big of a piece of string, it gets in your way when you're trying to do your design. Now I will do a little bit on this, both geometric and organic, and then I will use my previously made examples to do the final part of our, our art project. So, tip it. You can see the glue when it gets down. Otherwise, you'll be spewing air. And you know what that's like? And it just splatters. So, squeeze it. You're drawing with your glue. I'm going to do something there. I think that's about the same length as this. Get your toothpick in your hand. You're going to need it right away. So, what you're going to do is you're going to follow this. Hold it with your toothpick and you can actually guide it very slowly. Touch your toothpick very slowly. If you rush, you just, well, I just did it. You're just going to be dragging the glue onto another spot, which doesn't matter. I'm going to say this a million times on our journey through artistic wonderland. We're not machines. It's not supposed to look like a photograph. It's not supposed to look like a Xerox copy. All right, now I'm going to cut it. Ah, I need the big scissors. All right, it's being difficult, which they are sometimes. I'm not going to get flustered. I'm going to move this back where it belongs. Now, since this frayed a little bit on the end from the cutting, obviously it, I didn't hold the scissors correctly. Go ahead and put it little dot and get your trusty toothpick out. All right. Now I have faint glue on my fingers already. We've just started. I always keep a damp or wet ish, not wet cloth off to the side so that I can wipe that glue off of my fingers because otherwise things tend to stick to it. And I know that some students just don't like the feel of glue on their hands. So I have this little piece. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm just going to wind it around here. And I'm not rushing my glue. Don't rush. It's much more fun. 
it's kind of like a time in your life where you can just kind of sit here and let your mind just be totally involved in what you're doing in front of you. It's a really good thing to do every once in a while. All right, so there's your organic lines. Again, a little fraying on the end. It's not gonna matter because we're gonna smother this with glue water at the end, at the very end of our project, the finish of it. So we have our organic lines. Now I'm gonna show you about the difference between using string. That went down pretty well. And what I'm gonna do now is just tap all the way around. When you do that, you're actually forcing the glue in between these little tiny twirly areas and that's gonna keep it in place. This is going to be a time lapse to where you're gonna be doing this. You're gonna to have to wait an hour or two at least, unless you put it in the sun, to have this dry. Now, again, this is gonna be a little easier for cutting because now I can just cut pieces since it's going to be geometric and just straight lines that meet and form angled lines. All right, do three. Now this, use a little more glue. This is a synthetic, which means it's a man-made material. It's not from nature, so it takes a lot more glue. If you notice, my glue line's much thicker. Um, and easily, you can kind of measure these straight ones. There we go. Then I'm gonna put this down, then I'm gonna get my toothpick, and I'm gonna tap. It's okay if there's a big, it's kind of like a moat around it, a moat of glue. And let's put this one, it's about that long. All right, where's my toothpick? All right, it's a little long, but you know what? If you have it hang off the end like that, at the very, when it's dried, you can just take a scissors and clip that right off. That's what I did on mine. If you try to clip it when it's wet, it's going to move. I also found that out. I like finding things out by trial and error. Sometimes when someone tells you how to do something or what's going to happen, your brain's like, oh yeah, not to me. And then, yes, it does. Okay. So instead of cutting this, I'm going to add some glue. Shake. I almost did that with my glue. Lucky it just went All right, tap this down. So now you have your organic lines. Another thing, you can move that glue up with your toothpick. And I'm gonna wipe it off. Oh, I forgot. Put a piece of paper. I know not everyone has newspaper or an old piece of sheet or an old pillowcase underneath um, when you're doing this. It makes cleanup a lot easier and your grown-ups in your life will be very happy that you didn't get glue all over stuff. I had a friend once she came over with her child and her child actually started building something on my dining room table with popsicle sticks and glue and nothing underneath it. And Miss Linda didn't say anything, but I had a hard time cleaning it up. All right, this is how you're going to begin. These are what you're going to end up with. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. what do we do? Do we do organic? Do we do this? Or do we just do them both? All right, here's my glue. And I don't believe that's gonna be enough glue for both of these then but I think I can do two at once. Let's see. So take your glue cap off. Tip your glue cap always on the side. If you do it this way, there's always glue inside and it's gonna go onto the table or, or something. So here we go. And then twist it and twist it and that way you don't have it glopping over the sides. So that if next time you wanna open it, it won't. So I have one part glue. It's about that much. And now I'm going to take a little bit of water and I would like you to make your own paintbrush. Go find four or five Q-tips and either tape them together or rubber band them together in another good cleanup because you can just throw these out and stir this up. It should be thin, but not super thin. All right. Let's see, yeah, that's a way to test it. Up, and the, another good thing about the Q-tips is it will absorb some of the liquid, so your liquid is constantly or always coming out. I think this is perfect. So, I did try, if I can find in my 
glorious. Yes, cotton swabs are available everywhere. This I used regular gauze, like when you hurt yourself and you wrap with gauze. It will work if that's what you have. It just doesn't um, separate and give you, see how this separates right here? And it gives you more of a, I don't know, visual wow. This looks really cool. And it's just because gauze is made to not stick and not let liquids through that much. So um, it dried super hard like, hard like I wanted it to. And it was just a trial, I wanted to see it. So there's no really artistic design to it. If this is what you have, after you get permission, go ahead and use it. I say that a lot, but you know, really ask if you can use things. Almost always you will. Now this is cheesecloth I was talking about that drains. I'm going to use a single sheet. Oh, let's see, maybe I'm wrong. No, I'm gonna use a double sheet because the double sheet will not move. You'll still get movement. All right, I know what. I'm gonna do a double and a single just so you can see how, how it looks. Why not? Like I said, if you got an idea, go with it, try it. All you can do is find out that it didn't work out the way you wanted it to. All right, so I've cut this. And if you can see, it opens and can be very, very long. All right, let's do the single on the big one. So what I've done is put it over the top Get your scissors. Safety scissors will work as well. Mine are just buried under all of my artistic fun things that I have around me right now. Doesn't matter if it's a perfect straight up cut. This is a very organic, wonderful way of doing things. All right, so we're gonna double this one. Let's double it. I'm lucky there's a fold in it already so I don't have to worry too much. This is gonna be fun, I've never, Never done a double one. All right, up we go. And again, if you have pieces overlapping off the outside of your, um, your actual piece of artwork, it's okay, it can be trimmed off or you can leave it and let it look rugged. All right, and here we go. Are you ready? This is what you're gonna do. First, you're going to take this and get some glue on here. You want it to stick to it and then we're actually going to cover it. Oh, I suggest, you don't have to, I make suggestions because I find it easier to hold the little cup in your hand or whatever you're using because that way you're not slopping it over everything. All right, I think I have enough. The corners are always important because those are what hold everything down. So I'm going to make sure the corners are there. Then I'm going to lay my gauze gently over the top. And I forgot to tell you, another great tool to have around you all the time is the paper towel. Then you're going to roll this up and press. Just get it down a little bit. This is where the patience comes in. You have to hold your hand and completely cover this. It is not easy. Now, what's gonna happen is the glue will go through the cheesecloth and actually spread itself underneath. Can you see that happening? So once we get this on, and I'm using my other hand, now you know why we put a little water in it so that it doesn't just, see now it's starting to self, it's actually called self healing, which means it's actually flattening out itself. I love when things do things themselves. It's how we learn. Watch, look, open your eyes, try things out. All right, now this is our single one. We will not have time today to Watch it all dry, but you will have all the time that you want. Be gentle with the cheesecloth as it's very, very thin. It, as you can see, it's starting to self-heal. That's the word I'm using, just like this. When it dries, everything on top will be raised and then you'll have this amazing hard, listen to this. 
it's like you could probably serve coffee in the morning on this. That's how hard it is. So I'm going to try the double one before we close out. Remember, work with something underneath you. Now this is going to be a little different. You're going to have to use heavier and actually probably just stamp it on like this. I know sometimes my hands get in the way. We may find out right now that double is too much trouble. I'm sorry. I had to say that. It just, it's just too funny. Miss Linda believes that you should enjoy life. You should have fun. Laugh when you can laugh. Oh, it's starting to work. And you should also have patience, I guess, right? All right. Like I said, I don't want to do this too long. I know you want to get at it. So you're going to need your white glue. Use these when you're done. And you can see how it mops up that glue out of here. Yeah, it's starting to work. So I learned something along with all of you today that if I chose to use a thicker piece of cheesecloth, it would work. I learned that if I wanted to use gauze, it may not have the same effect. Oh, look, this also picks it back up. And when I'm done with these, they go right in the trash can. And you don't have to wash things out. Oh, you know what? That's going to work. Well, somewhere along the way, I will have finished these and there'll be a photo of them somewhere so that you can see because I would hate to disappoint you after all of this instruction and work and fun for you not to see how the two of them turned out differently. So when you're done, clean up your mess, pack things away, leave these out on the paper to dry. If you put them in the sun, they will dry faster. Wipe your hands off, close your glue, this is my suggestion. Close your glue and then wipe the top. It keeps it from becoming like permanently closed or very frustrating at times because even right there you can see there's a little piece of glue. Don't forget your toothpicks. Keep toothpicks by your side at all times. That's my artistic advice for today. And thank you. This was a blast. Have fun. Do something new and share it with someone you know. Hope you all had a really good time watching me sh show you how to make these beautiful texture pieces of artwork. It's going to be super hard when you're done. You're going to love it. Um, remember, you can pause me. You can pause me at any time if you're doing it with me. And if you're not doing it with me, you're just watching and then you're going to do the project. You can always rewind, go back and forth. It's one of the better things about doing it online. Now, these were the two that I did that I wasn't sure if they're going to work. This one looks like it's going to. We will get a photo when it's done. It's starting to work. This one looks beautiful and it's only been a few minutes. So I tried something new. I learned something today too. So if we keep that vision of just try it, see if it works. When it does, yee -hee. if it doesn't, oh well, let's try something different. So thanks again for being with me. I am enjoying myself beyond words and I hopefully you are too and learning something that you enjoy at the same time.